Since episode number one, I've had the same repeated question on every subsequent episode that we've done on this show. Uh, repeatedly asked, when are you doing Centrica? Uh, they seem to be very, very popular company, of popular stock in uh, in the UK. Listen, if you are intrigued to know how Centrica are going to do today, please do me a massive favour and smash that like button. Uh, the more likes we get, the more people that get to see these videos, and it's actually working. Uh, I think the Taylor Wimpy video may be close to 30 likes, and it's getting more views than the other ones have. So uh, it's the best way to support me and support the work that I'm doing. So if you've got the time to click that little thumb, that would be awesome. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're going to spend today taking a look at Centrica. <laughs> Hey there guys, welcome then to episode number 12 of the FTSE show, uh, I can't keep track, um, we're going to take a look at Centrica PLC, otherwise uh, known as, or the owners of British Gas, and uh, a very, very popular stock, these guys trade 43 million shares a day, which is um, astonishing to be fair, I mean, a very, very popular massive ton of volume exchanging hands every single day uh the messages that i've been getting from people asking me when i'm going to do centrica is testament to the fact that they're clearly very popular i'm not entirely sure why if i'm honest uh i mean yes they're a household name yes a lot of people know who british gas are i i genuinely don't know why everyone is so obsessed with the stock um, but let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, so we're looking at Centrica's numbers then. Uh, FTSE 100 company in the gas, water and multi-utility sector. Uh, owner of British Gas. And uh, yeah, a highly popular stock to be traded. Uh, 43 million a day, I believe it is. So, first of all, we're going to take a look at the revenue. Revenue has grown. That is correct that is true however from 2014 to 2018 so one two three four five years worth of annual reports we've seen no growth we've seen 29.4 billion in 2014 29.6 billion which is pretty much about the same in 2018 and in the interim in the years between that it actually f fell the revenue fell uh, we've only just got back up to where it was in 2014 so Unfortunately, whilst there is some longer term growth, if you're looking all the way back over the last 10 years uh, or longer, uh, the last five years, there really has not been any growth. And that is a f the first warning sign for me uh, is that this is if, when we're looking for growth stocks, we want to see a growth in revenue. Um, cost of sales have done pretty much the same thing. I mean, it was at 26.1 billion in 2014. It's now at 25.6 billion in 2018. Uh, in the interim, it did fall a little bit. Uh, the best way to kind of look at this is with the gross margins. What percentage of the slice of the pie did they get to keep? Uh, and on average, over the last five years, we're looking at about 15%. Uh, for the five years prior to that, it was about 21% was the average. Now down to 15%. So they're taking a smaller slice of the pie. So of all the revenue that's coming in, how much are they getting to keep? Uh, and the amount that they're getting to keep is a smaller slice than it was between 2008 and 2012 and uh, from 2014 to 2018 it's a smaller slice so things moving in the wrong direction there they're getting less they get to keep less of that revenue which is uh, again another warning sign then we come down to expenses now something I don't like about this company is these spikes in expenses uh, 2014 we got a massive spike went from 3.6 billion to 4.5 billion which is a big jump uh, and uh, that was in a year where uh, the cost of sales also went up very high as well. And uh, so as a result of that, they're going to have a bad year. Uh, the next year, 124% of the gross profit uh, was used up in expenses. Again, they're going to have another losing year, clearly. The expenses are more than the profit that they've made. So they're going to have a losing year. Then we've had uh, 2016 at half decent uh, expenses cost. And then again, another spike in expenses in 2017 and 2018, it was just high, but not too high. 
I don't like these spikes in expenses, but it's too unpredictable for me. I want a consistent company that I know are going to be operating at a certain level, not a company where the prices are going to go up and down all the time. This might be something to do with dealing in the energy sector, you know, gas and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the bottom line is that that puts me off this company as a growth stock. Um, then we can come down to interest on debt. Interest on debt has been very high in the last couple of years. Uh, it, it's gone up. It hasn't, you know, we're talking about an extra 100 million or so. But the reason it's, the percentages are so high is because obviously we've had some big expense costs coming through as well. Uh, where the true picture lies is in the net earnings here. They don't look pretty. This is not a company that I would be looking to get involved with as a growth stock. So I want to really kind of emphasize that I'm only looking at companies that I want to invest in. Or I'm looking at all companies, but I'm looking for companies to invest in that I that, that give me the indicators that suggest the odds are high that the share price is going to grow within the next two to five to 10 to 20 years. This is a long term game for me. Right. So. Yes, there may be other reasons you might invest in Centrica, but growth stock or, or trying to find a growth stock would not be, this would not be the company you're looking for. They've got two losing years in the last five for starters, so they lost 3.9% and 3.8% in 2014-2015. Since then, a recovery of sorts, uh, and 2016 was a decent year, I suppose, 5.8%, but it's all downhill. Uh, 1% in 2017, 0.9% in 2018. So, okay, they're not losing money in the last three years, but the trend, the overall trend is downwards. They're making less and less. They've gone from 1.6 billion in profits to just 242 million in profits. And uh, that's a tight margin. You know, this is a company bringing in 29.6 billion and only keeping, by the end of the year, 242 million of that. That's not great. Uh, it's a very, very sm small margin. And again, these uh, spikes in expenses. I mean, we had a spike there in 2014, spike there in 2015. Look at the net earnings. They lost money that year. So it's these spikes in earnings that are really costing them. And I don't like that. Uh, we can look at the balance sheet. Assets just about cover liabilities on the cut on the short side, on the short term. So that's OK. That's not a real issue. Uh, I've noticed here that the uh, property, plant and equipment assets went from 7.9 billion uh, and they've gone down. They're now at only 4.1 billion. So generally speaking, if you're looking at a healthy growth stock, the assets are going to rise. And to see a decline in assets is a concern. It might be part of a, um, a strategy that Centrica are doing, but uh, overall... The uh, total assets have gone down from 23.4 billion in 2013, and we're now looking at 20 million, 20 billion, sorry, in 2018. So it's a three billion reduction over the last six annual reports in terms of the total assets that the company owns. I don't like that. I'm looking for companies where the assets are growing, not 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 declining. Uh, and then obviously, when we look at uh, debt levels as well, debt levels are for me too high. For Centrica, they might be fine, but for me and the companies that I'm looking for and the companies I want to invest in, when I'm looking at debt levels, I look at the debt level relative to the uh, earnings power of the company. Uh, I think that's the most relevant way to measure, are they biting off more than they can chew? And the answer with Centrica is absolutely. They've got a 4.3 billion debt. Uh, it's pretty much the same as it was back in 2009 so then they've not really made any significant effort in reducing their outstanding debt uh, at, the, at the level that they are earning in terms of net earnings it would take them 16.8 years to pay off that's too long for me and I'm not interested in that that's unfortunately not something that's not these are not good numbers okay um, and then we can look at the net assets or the equity well back in 2010 they were sitting on 6.1 billion of shareholder equity that's now down to 3.9 billion uh, it's been lower it's made its way back up over the last four years but I'm, I'm put off absolutely there's a downward trend there for sure uh, with that and uh, we can look at the retained earnings again we've got a downward trend with retained earnings this is the uh, cash reserves that the company are keeping hold of uh, was at 1.5 billion in 2016 it's now down to half that 
by 2018 and you can see back here it was much higher as in, in the four, 4 billion mark at one point and they've obviously been dipping into that pot and uh, there ain't much left unfortunately and the um, the last couple of years the retained uh, earnings the reserves have dropped by 30% a year on average and the return on shareholder equity is also not strong at all we're looking at 6.6% in the last annual report um, capital expenditure too high uh, they're spending far too much relative to what they actually make on the purchase of property plant and equipment which is interesting bearing in mind that the actual value of their property plant and equipment in terms of the asset value has been reducing so and the reason why I'm really emphasizing this is this is not good is because this is such a popular stock so many people have asked me to look at this company well my honest opinion of Centrica is I would never touch them I'm not interested in any companies like this uh, they would never see the light of day in my portfolio because there are far better companies if you want share price growth there are far better companies out there for you to put your money into why put them into a company like this that has the unpredictability of these expense spikes that has such a small gross margin that is declining in terms of the slice of the pie that has these um, high interest on debt that has high debts that's only making 0.9% net earnings a year at the moment and that's been declining over the last three years uh, a company that's got history of making losing years because of these spikes and expenses none of this looks good you know uh, the retained earnings the reserves are, are dropping in value I don't like it at all and as a result of that I'm not keen uh, we'll have a quick look at the chart Okay, so this is not a growth stock. This is not a company I would ever be investing in. Uh, this is not, I mean, people say to me, now Centric has reached this price, are they a good opportunity to buy? Listen, if a company's gone all the way down to from uh, £4 a share in 2013 down to 76 pence per share in 2020, the only reason this would be a good company to get involved in is if the share price had fallen but the company's financials were looking really strong and that they actually had a future. Uh, Centrica's financials show me no indication that this share price should go up in the future. It may go up a little bit, it might, you know, the natural ebbs and flows of the stock market, but we're talking about meaningful growth, you know, back up to £4 a share and higher. Because uh, that's what we're going to want, you know, if we're going to invest in Centrica over the next 10 years. We want that share price to go from 76 pence a share to far, far higher. Yeah, uh, we want hundreds of percent return from a company that we're going to invest in. I don't see that coming from Centrica. And uh, there's a reason why the share price is down at 76 pence per share, because the financials do not look solid. They do not look good. And the smart investors are not putting their money into this company. So, I mean, this tells us a picture to stay away. And that, quite simply, is my analysis of Centrica PLC. Okay, so once again, the charts reflect the numbers, right? Uh, the, 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 the financials do not look good. The financials are not good, what I'm looking for. Uh, if you're a different kind of investor, maybe British Gas appeals in some way. Uh, maybe dividend investors, I haven't checked the dividend and what the yield is. So maybe it's a, there's an attractive dividend there in this stock. I'm not a dividend investor myself. Dividends are kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're a nice to have sort of thing on top of the, the, the capital gains that I'm getting from the growth stocks. British Gas is not a growth stock. Uh, it does not tick any of the boxes that I'm really looking for uh, that help me identify growth stocks. And as a result of that, obviously, we're, not, we're going nowhere near British Gas or, or Centrica, I should say. Um, so let's see how they fared on the leaderboard then. It's not going to be pretty, guys. I'm telling you now. OK, let me just run through some very basic numbers here. In the last year, this stock has achieved a minus 37 percent return. In the last three years, it's achieved a minus 66% return. And in the last five years, it's a minus 69% return. So if you've been holding British Gas as a long-term uh, trader, investor, you know, long-term strategy, uh, over the last five years, you'd be 69% down on the price of British Gas, uh, or Centrica PLC, I should be saying. 
Uh, Epic Code CNA, Centrica PLC. These guys score a woeful... I've got the red pen out, so you know it's bad. Minus 94 points. I, I, I'm lost for words as to why this company is so popular. Uh, like I say, there must be something that I'm missing in terms of the attraction to Centrica. They are a company I would not be going anywhere near in terms of growth stock investment. The share price is plummeting. It continues to fall. Yes, some people may think that is an attractive price right now. The financials keep me well out of that. I'm not interested in, in getting involved in Centrica PLC at all. They prop up our leaderboard. Worse than Tesco, worse than BP, worse than all the others. The worst score we've had on this show. Uh, I haven't seen many worse than that. In fact, I'm not sure I've seen any worse than that. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't make money from Centrica. There are going to be ways you can do that. There are, you know, intraday trading, perhaps uh, dividend investing, maybe. I, d I don't know the yield, as I say. Um, but if you're looking for growth stocks, if you're looking for a stock that's going to rise in value and stay up and do really, really well and keep growing and growing and growing over the next two, five, 10, 20 years, I would stay away from British Gas or, or Centrica PLC because there are better stocks to put your money into that will give you the returns that you're looking for. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying the FTSE show, please leave a like on the video. It would be the best way you can support what I'm doing. Uh, and it just gives me some feedback as to knowing that you guys are interested and that you're enjoying the show. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Oh,